Thanks for that powerful speech. You may be seated. Really deep. You know, sometimes, I mean, I have kids myself, and sometimes you think about giving them a great future, and when you think about their future, you think about pumping more and more into them. But it was powerful just thinking about the fact that their future is not just what you put into them, but also the world that will be around them when they get there. So thank you very much for that really powerful talk. Um, our next speaker is Yvonne Benson Idahosa. I left Nigeria last I left Nigeria year because, because I was a single mother of two. My mother was the one taking care of me. I'm the only child of my mom. So when my child was four months, I lost my mom. So I have to take care of my, my child alone. I met a woman at Oba Market. So the woman has to introduce me to this man. He said he's a trafficker. We do call them buggers. Mm -hmm. So that's how he buggered me too. Nigeria has a population of 170, 180 million, depending on who you, uh, who you ask. Um, only about 4.1 million of those people live here in Edo State. And the unfortunate reality is that over 95% of the women and girls who are trafficked from Nigeria are trafficked from Edo State. Human trafficking, sex trafficking in particular, um, has become so embedded in our culture. It is, is almost, it's, it's practically acceptable um, in many ways. And most of them are forced to have sex with anywhere between four to 6,000 men over a two to three year period, earning only about five to ten dollars per transaction in order to pay a debt, repay a debt uh, back to the uh, madame who trafficked her from Nigeria of anywhere between 35 and 50,000 dollars. Pathfinders was actually a nickname that my father gave me when I was nine. He would call me his Pathfinder because he would say that no matter where he was in the world, I would always track him down. And so when I started thinking and praying about a name for the organization, um, that just came to mind because it's not just who I am, it's who my father called me prophetically, but it's also what we're trying to do for these women and girls is to help them find their path out of injustice, out of torture, out of um, exploitation. <laughs> So what we're doing is really focusing not just on rehabilitation for survivors of, of sex trafficking, helping them to rebuild um, their lives and uh, put together broken dreams, um, but also focused on helping uh, women who are pre-trafficking, who are potentially subject to being trafficked, um, and putting them in a position where they have a choice, where they have agency, where they can self-determine. I want you to start to dream. The things that you had in your mind before that you wanted to do, all the possibilities, start to dream again. Allow yourself to get into that space of possibilities, okay? Because what is, has happened to you in the past is in the past, you know? But you are in a position to be able to control the future that, that God has given you a second opportunity with. My fundamental belief is that every woman is entitled to live a life of dignity, uh, to live a life that is graced, with self-determination and a life um, where she's not robbed of agency or subject to sexual exploitation. And so that's really the impetus for why I do what I do. Um, every single woman should be able to get up and live a life that she chooses. I think it's the love of our country, right, that compels us to speak and to amplify the voices of others. And so um, every single person is in a position to do that. Um, some of, uh, someone like me, who does have a lot of privilege, um, 
believes that with great privilege comes great responsibility, right? Particularly in Nigeria, there's this sort of belief that, um, you know, this is Nigeria, everybody be criminal, right? Um, um, but, the, but, but that's a lie, you know, and that's uh, one of the things I want people to realize that that is something um, that they can actually change. Um, it may not be in the same way that somebody um, else who has access to uh, whether, you know, whether it's money or whether it's um, influence um, might do, but, they, but everybody has a power to change. Let's welcome Yvonne Bensley Gidahosa. I am uh, grateful to be here, and I want to thank, of course, Pastor Poju and uh, my That's sister, Tohin. Lovely um, to be a part of this. I'm really, really grateful. And I feel like the first speaker just stole everything I want to say. <laughs> you know, as an activist, I was sitting there shouting, yes, yes. Um, but I'm honored to be here and just grateful to have my family, the support of my family and my friends, uh, those of you who are physically here and those of you um, who are watching uh, on television or on social media. So growing up as a young child in Benin City, my mother would often trace our feet on pieces of paper um, just before she was traveling to the U.S. or to England. Now once she arrived, she would awkwardly take these drawings of our feet to a shoe store to estimate our shoe sizes. And when she returned back to Benin, we were always overjoyed, right? Regardless of whether the shoes were too big 